Hi everyone, it's Lynn Dion from Pink Whisper Designs. Today I want to show you a brand new set from Art Impressions in the watercolor series. And we'll also be creating kind of a unique card design today. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm starting off with the Art Impressions Nested Rectangle Die Set. And you can see all the rectangles you get in this set. And I'm going to use that second largest one. We're going to die cut a couple of panels for our card, one out of some white Strathmore Bristol Smooth cardstock, and the second one out of some Hero Arts Premium cardstock. I'm going to go ahead and run those through the Spellbinders Platinum 6 die cutting machine. And then I'll place that first one in my mini Misty stamp positioner. And I do need to remove the mat and the positioner because you can see that the stamps we're going to be using today are the thick rubber stamps. So you need to remove that pad. I'm using a little bit of my Tombow tape runner to tape this in place. And then I've got the brand new watercolor rose set from Art Impressions. And these little roses are just absolutely gorgeous. I just think this set is so versatile that you could use it for just about anything. I'm going to save that one little single rose for later. So we're going to grab these four roses and you can see in that set you get a couple of uh, an extra set of leaves and a little sprig. So it's a nice little set if you want to create a wreath or a background. Now I'm going to create some backgrounds today and what I'm doing is placing that paper a little bit up and over from the corner of the misty so that I can have these go over the edge a little bit, so I can have my images go over the edge. We are going to be doing some embossing, so I've got my pink and main anti-static brush. I'm going to place a bit of that on this panel. And then for ink, I'm using the Versamark Watermark ink pad. This is a embossable pigment ink, and I'll press that out with the Stampendable Stamp Pressing Tool. Let's do the same exact thing. We'll stamp those same images in the same place. So you do want to make sure you move it up one, one quarter inch from the bottom and then a half an inch from the right side, just like we did before. So you do want to make sure your positioning of the paper is exactly the same each time you do this. So now that I've stamped both of those, I can go ahead and do my embossing. I'm using one of my absolute favorite embossing powders and that's from Ranger and it's called Liquid Platinum and I just love this. It really does emboss like liquid. That's all I can say. It, it has this beautiful smooth effect to it. And I'm going to go ahead and heat set that. Now when you're doing your embossing you want to make sure that it looks shiny on top. If you see some dark spots, you know it's not completely embossed. So just kind of tip it into the light, make sure everything looks nice and shiny, and then you'll know for sure that you've embossed it completely. So now these two panels are identical. Let's clean off those stamps so that we can move them around and fill in the rest of these two panels. So I'm going to use that same positioning in the Misty that we used before. And I'll just, again, I, I do want some of these to look like they're going over the edge. I think that gives a nicer look when you're doing these backgrounds. And do make sure you clean off the stamps really well before you reposition them. You don't want to transfer any of that ink down onto your cardstock. So I'll go ahead and ink those up. Again, we'll press that out with the pressing tool. I'll set that aside. We can do the embossing. I like to do it kind of in stages. You could do it after each stamping. I'm going to stamp both panels and then do the embossing. Remember, it is a pigment ink, so it is going to stay wet long enough for us to do a couple panels at a time. So now we'll do that same thing. We'll sprinkle on some of that liquid platinum embossing powder. Just tap away any excess. Now, if you do have some powder that sticks, you can just grab a small brush and just brush that away before you do your embossing. So let's go ahead and heat set these. You can see this little background is starting to come together and look at how gorgeous these roses are. So 
So next, what we'll do is finish up the stamping. So I'm going to do that off camera the exact same way. And next, I've got a clean, soft towel, and I'm just going to wipe off any of that extra anti-static powder that's sitting on top of the cardstock. Once I've done that, let's take these two panels. The white one we are going to leave just as is, and we're going to cut this pink panel. So I thought it would be fun to create a unique front for our card. What we're going to do is measure up one and one half inch from that bottom right hand corner up. I'm using the Misty T ruler to do this because it has these measurements on both sides. And then I'll go to one and one half inches from the right hand corner to the left. So one and one half inch up and to the left. And again, that T ruler has those nice measurements right there for us. So we don't have to move the ruler around. It's going to be really easy to find those two spots. Now you could measure this any way you like. I just found that this worked really well for me. So you can go up or down, higher or lower than that. So then we're going to cut from that corner, the upper left-hand corner, to those pencil marks. So again, I want to keep that little corner on the upper left and then cut down to this one and a half inch mark. And I'm using the Tim Holtz paper trimmer to do this. I'll get a nice clean cut. And now you can see that's how this would have been together. And we've cut that little panel in the middle out, which looks like a little tie to me. So we're going to set that middle piece aside. You could use that for another project. You could do the reverse of this card with that panel if you wanted to. So that would actually be really kind of fun. So this is how our card will come together. So you can see that I don't need to do all the coloring. I'm going to slide that pink panel back a little bit and make a pencil mark there. And I'll slide this bottom one back a little bit and make another pencil mark. So I only need to color those roses in between those pencil lines. The rest of them will not show. My glass medium mat, but I didn't think the inks would show. So I'm going to put the craft mat on top of this that comes with the glass medium mat. And we'll start with light pink and pink. And I was hoping that you could see these colors. I'm just using the Zig Clean Color Real Brush Pens, and I'm scribbling those colors right down onto this palette. Now, I've got some water and a number zero brush. So this is a tiny little brush. And I'm first taking the water and placing plenty of it on the rose. And then I'm going to drop in the light pink and the pink. And I'm not going to be fussy here at all. I'm just dropping in these colors. I really want this to go quickly. I want it to kind of have, I don't know, just a really soft, random watercolor look. I don't want to be perfect in my coloring. You can certainly come back in and fix a few things if you like. I'm going to just drop in a little bit more color. And I don't necessarily color in the rose completely. I might leave some little white areas. So whatever you feel comfortable with here. You could certainly color them completely using your zigs directly onto your cardstock if you prefer that. Now I've switched to the yellow and the scarlet red. I've scribbled those down onto my mat and I'm just going to start with the water and then we'll add a little bit of the yellow and then I'm just dropping in some of that scarlet red. It makes it easier if you have a little bit more water. And also what makes this really easy is the embossing. It's going to stay within those embossed lines. The, that embossing is raised up just enough so that when you drop in the water and your colors, they stay right within that embossed area. So that makes this really simple. So let's add some more water. Get this nice and wet. And then what we'll do is grab that peach pink and scribble it onto the mat and then drop that color down in. So at this point now, I'm just going to repeat all of these colors from here on out. So, and I do want some of them to mix together. The scarlet red and the yellow make a beautiful creamsicle color. You can see I'm adding a little bit of that. And then we've got the pink shades. So I'm just going to mix these together. And that's what makes it nice, just scribbling it down onto your mat. You can kind of grab the colors that you need and if you need some a bit more shadowing, you can drop a little bit more of those darker colors in. 
Now let me show you a few more just to give you the idea of how I really didn't fuss with these. I really just kind of let this go the way it wanted to. I just think it's really pretty and it's a very soft look. Sometimes it's a little bit hard to do if you're kind of like I am where it's a little bit hard to just leave it and not keep going back and fussing with it. But I do think you get the best result with this technique if you just let it be. Just drop the color in and kind of let it do its thing. You get a really soft, pretty look. And do keep in mind that all of the products I'm using today are listed and linked down below and also on my blog. And again, what's really nice about these roses is you could use these plus the little extras that come with the set, uh, the sprigs and some extra leaves to do a beautiful wreath or an absolutely gorgeous border. And also use these in combination with your other stamp sets. Now these are part of the Art Impressions watercolor series, so you could certainly use these to put into the containers, the little wagons that, that they have. There's all kinds of cute little elements that you could place these roses into. So keep that in mind as well. This is going to work with, I think, all of your sets. Now I am switching to light green and green, and I'll quickly do the leaves. I'll start with that light green, and then we'll drop in a little bit of that darker green and just let that bleed out just a little bit. Now you see that I am cleaning off my brush here and there. I've got a paper towel off to the side and I'm just dabbing off any excess color. And that just makes it easier to uh, remove any of that darker color that you don't need. So let's do this last one here. And then I'll finish up any of those extra little bits off camera. Now I did want to show you that I did do quickly the stems. There wasn't a lot to do because of the embossing. There was just a little bit. So I added a little green to those stems. Next we'll do a little bit of spattering. I'm going to take the scarlet red and the yellow. Again, this makes that beautiful creamsicle color. So I'll go ahead and mix those two together. And then I'm going to do some spattering. Again, I've got that number zero brush, which is a little tiny brush. I want to get some small spatters. So here I was just trying to decide which color. I decided to go with that pink, that darker pink, and I'm going to spatter this. This will tie into that bright pink paper that we're using on the front of the card. So look at how pretty that is. And that just ties everything together. And then I also wanted to spatter this with a little bit of Wink of Stella. So what I like to do is just squeeze out a little bit of that Wink of Stella onto my glass media mat and then add a little bit of water from my Distress Sprayer and spatter that panel. And I'm going to do the same for this panel as well. And that'll just give us a nice little shimmer on the front. Let's let those dry and grab some Tim Holtz craft stock. These are the metallics and I'm going to grab that really pretty silver metallic. Let's go to that largest die from that same nested rectangle die set and we'll put that on a little bit of an angle and I do like to add some scrap paper over the top of my metallics just so that I don't get any markings on that paper and I grab some brand new plates as well just to make sure that I didn't get any weird little marks on there. So I ran that through the die cutting machine and now we can glue this panel right onto the front of that metallic cardstock. And I use that Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive and now I've got some 3D foam tape and I've placed it all over the back of these two panels and I'm going to position that right back in the corner. Now remember everything will line up perfectly. So these roses on the top will line up with the roses underneath because of the way we did our stamping. And let's remove the backing. I've got that Cricut, we Cricut weeding tool, just pressing with the flat edge, and then I can pull that backing up really easily. So if you press down that release paper first, it makes it really easy to pull off that backing. 
So now look at this. We have this really pretty design for the front of the card. Now let's go to the journal template die set. This is from Art Impressions and I use this all the time. I won't spend a lot of time showing it to you because I know I've shown it to you several times. But I'm going to grab that larger tag from this set. You do get three tags in the set. I'll run that through the Sizzix Sidekick machine, again using some Strathmore Bristol Smooth cardstock. And I'm going to place this on my Misty stamp positioner. And then I've got the Birthday Sentiment set from Art Impressions. I'm going to use that little sentiment that says Best Wishes. I absolutely love the script on that. It's just so pretty and elegant. So we're going to stamp that on the bottom of the tag and we'll do it the exact same way we done everything else with the watermark ink and some liquid platinum embossing powder and then we'll go ahead and heat set that. Let's go ahead and attach this to some of that same silver metallic paper cardstock that we used before. This is a nice heavyweight cardstock so that's going to give a little substance to our tag. I'm just going to trim this up so that I leave maybe about a sixteenth of an inch all the way around. And I'm just going to use my detail scissors to do that. This is really quick to do. And that, again, will give it a little more substance and give it that pretty shine around the edges. And next we can punch a hole through that metallic cardstock. And then I've got some hot pink twine. Just take a bit of this and we can tie a bow at the top of our tag. And I'm just going to use my reverse tweezers to hold that in place while I tie that bow. And then I'll just trim off a little bit more from those ends. We'll create the card base. I've got some Strathmore Bristol Smooth cardstock that measures eight and a half by five and a half. And we'll score that at four and a quarter. So this will be a standard A2 size card. I'm going to go ahead and press that out with the bone folder. Now, going back to this tag, this is where I decided to add that little single rose. And I'm going to use my anti-static powder and do the same exact thing for the stamping. Now, I do want to suggest here that maybe you do your stamping before you tie your ribbon on and attach it to your metallic cardstock. I just wasn't exactly sure what I was going to be doing in the beginning, so I did it at this point. Now, I didn't have any problems, but when you use that heat tool, you might want to be careful because uh, if you have a silk ribbon tied up there at the top, that could melt it. So with the twine, I wasn't worried about it. So you may want to make sure you do this before you attach your ribbon. Now, let's go ahead and attach this panel to the front of the card. I've got my Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive. And we'll center that on the front. And then we can go ahead and attach this tag. Now for the tag, I want to make it level with that hot pink cardstock. So I'm going to place a little bit of foam tape in the bottom right hand corner and then I'll place a little bit of glue on the other three corners. And then I'll kind of nestle that right into that little opening and attach that to the front of the card. Now let's add a little bit of bling to this. I've got these Pink Fresh Studio Metallic Pearls and these are the silver. I love these. They're so sparkly and bright. I'm going to add three at the bottom of the tag. There's three sizes in this set of pearls. I love when you get three different sizes. It just makes it so much more fun and more interesting for your card. So I've got a medium size one in the center and two of the little tiny ones on each side. Then I'm going to add three more down at the bottom and then two up at the top. Again, just adding a little bit more bling. I've got my little pickup tool. Makes it a lot easier to pick up these little gems. It's kind of like a sticky end on it, so you can easily pick those up and place these down with a little bit of glue. Now the next thing I'm going to do is grab the Signo gel pen. 
This is a product that Art Impressions has started carrying. They have the white gel pen, the silver, and the gold now. And this is really pretty. I'm just adding a few little dots of the silver. I did decide to go back over those and make them a little bit bigger. I wanted something even a little bit tinier than the tiny gems, just to give a little bit more sparkle in the background. Not sparkle, but more of a metallic, to tie in that metallic paper with the metallic gel pen. So once that was done, let me give you a closer look at the finished card. And again, we have that pretty sparkle from the Wink of Stella that we spattered on. And I think this is just kind of a fun, different take on a standard A2 size card. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you don't miss a single video. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you all have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.